G'day everyone, welcome to the Shine Shed YouTube channel. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be doing a comparison for the ownership cost of Land Rover Discovery 3 versus Toyota Land Cruiser Series 80. So, coming right up. Now, before I get into all that, uh, if you're not familiar with my YouTube channel, uh, I mostly do it, film myself mucking about in the shed. Uh, lately, it's been quite a bit of uh, mucking about with the, the Disco 3. Uh, that's just a uh, high maintenance vehicle as we're going to find out uh, and my Chev Suburban and pretty much anything else that I get my hands in here so if that sort of content interests you then go check out my other stuff uh, and don't forget to like share subscribe uh, all that so let's get into it so interesting these two vehicles I own them both for eight years uh, now the Land Cruiser uh, I own that from about mid 2006 to mid-2014 uh, when it unfortunately got written off. Story for another time maybe. Uh, I bought that with 155,000 Ks on the clock and by the time it uh, met the end of its life it was 361,000 roughly. So total kilometers in that was uh, 206,000 thereabouts in, the, in that eight years. The ownership for the Disco 3, so obviously you got that after the Land Cruiser 80. Uh, mid-2014 uh, to currently uh, March 2022 so again about eight years uh, I bought that with 165,000 Ks on the clock uh, currently at 401 so uh, we've got a total of around 236,000 kilometers so hey eight years we've done probably a little bit more kilometers in the Disco than the, the Land Cruiser uh, but yeah, all in all, uh, pretty similar, and it's a pretty good comparison for you know what it's going to cost to maintain high high mileage vehicles. Probably worth mentioning before I start as well. I'm not going to include the cost of insurance and uh, and registration. I, I think it's just it's probably something that varies too much. Like if you're talking in Australia, it varies a lot by state to state. If you're somewhere else in the world, it's not really a it's not a figure that's comparable uh, for you know anywhere else other than Western Australia really and also you know the Land Cruiser was eight years previous to now so you know especially Rego I noticed here in WA has gone up a massive amount in that time so it's not a, a fair thing to compare so I'll break this down into fuel servicing uh, repairs uh, additions and yeah that's it so servicing is going to cover your routine, uh, you know, oils, filters, uh, belts, all, all that sort of stuff that you do on a regular basis, you know, like a, a routine, you know, 10,000 kilometers service, 20,000, uh, up to your belts, you know, like 100,000 kilometers, all that sort of stuff. Uh, repairs are basically anything that's uh, is outside of the routine servicing. So anything that you replace, uh, I guess unexpectedly, you know, uh, suspension bushes, uh, suspension components, uh, wheel bearings, etc. I'm sure you know where I'm getting at with this. And additions, now, I include uh, tyres in additions. Uh, that's just the way I separate it in the software that I use for recording this info. Uh, but additions will also include, uh, you know, roof racks, awnings, bull bars, all that sort of junk and extras that they fall drivers throw on their rigs. Uh, you know what I'm talking about there. Some people go absolutely bananas with this. Uh, I've kept it pretty simple. Okay, so let's kick off. Fair warning though, uh, before we start, if you have not kept records of uh, what you spend on a vehicle and you've never really thought about adding it up over the years, uh, and you're watching this sort of info for the first time, you'd probably be surprised at how much it actually costs. So, you know, brace yourself for impact. So if you have no idea what this sort of stuff costs you long term and you don't want to know, then I'd probably say go somewhere else and watch another YouTube video. So with that warning out of the way, let's, uh, let's get into the details. So I'll be relying on my notes here because there's a fair bit of info. Uh, so yeah. So we'll start off with the fuel cost now. So with all these figures I'm gonna give you, I'll talk about 
one, the total cost over eight years, and I'll break that down into a, uh, a cost per kilometre as well. So, I don't know, it might give you a bit of an idea of, you know, if you're looking at either one of these vehicles, uh, you know, how many kilometres you may do a year, it can give you a ballpark figure of what it's gonna cost you. Now, bear in mind there's eight years difference. Uh, the Disco, I've had that for eight years now. The Land Cruiser was eight years prior to that, so we're talking about a span of 16 years here all up. Uh, now, the average price of fuel, when I had the Land Cruiser, $1.54 per litre. The Disco, $1.37 per litre. So, it's got a little bit cheaper there, which Disco average fuel consumption is 13.9 uh, litres per 100 kilometres. And that's first to the Land Cruiser 80 series on 14.6 litres per 100. Now, very different engines in between these two. So, Land Cruiser, the old 1HZ, 4.2 litre, uh, indirect injection diesel, six cylinder diesel. Very inefficient engine. Uh, you know, overall power, uh, reliable as all hell. Uh, yeah, if you know those engines, there's not much more I can say about them that you don't already know. Versus the Disco, a much more modern 2.7 litre turbo diesel V6. Uh, obviously a little bit better fuel economy. And, like I mentioned earlier, a little bit cheaper average fuel price. So this is, means that overall the fuel price, the fuel cost uh, has been a little bit lower than the Disco. So. We're talking $42,705 in the Disco versus $48,569 in the 80 Series. So that's uh, 18 cents per kilometre uh, for fuel in the Disco and 22 cents per kilometre in the Land Cruiser. Okay, so moving on. Let's Let's talk servicing now. Like I said earlier, oils, filters, etc. All the routine crap. Uh, Disco, uh, seven thousand nine hundred and sixty-four dollars or three cents a kilometre, versus seven thousand four hundred and ninety-six dollars or four cents a kilometre in the Land Cruiser. So the Disco is actually showing a little bit uh, cheaper per kilometre there. Uh, the total figure is only higher because of that extra, uh, what we're saying, 30,000 kilometres we've travelled. So, in in some cases, that may be, you know, like a year's travel. Actually, probably more than, probably two years travel for the average Australian vehicle. But uh, both of these would have been average. Well, I know the Disco is definitely averaging up about 30,000 k's a year. So, that's pretty straightforward cost. There's not much else involved. So repairs, all the unexpected stuff you do throughout the year. So this is where the gap widens majorly. <laughs> There's no, no other way to say it. Uh, the Disco, $22,613, uh, which is 10 cents per kilometre. Versus the Land Cruiser, which is $2,693, or or one cent per kilometre. This hammers home the reliability that uh, a lot of Toyota owners always go on about. And you know, I've been a Toyota owner before, so I certainly know about it. Uh, probably just a little side shoot of that. The most expensive repair uh, in the 80 series was when I done radius arm bushes uh, in the front. So that was just parts alone was $576. So that was just the price of genuine bushes and just change them over and the press will work. So, uh, versus the Disco, <laughs> that, the biggest repair cost I've gotten that was $7,463 and that was for a failed auto transmission. So yeah, that was a pretty big one, but there's been a lot of high cost repairs on the Disco. Uh, most of this is all parts uh, and not labor. I'll, I'll touch on that at the end of the video. Uh, but the main, point out there, the average cost per repair on the Disco has been $404 uh, versus the Land Cruiser, uh, 108 Let's talk additions. So uh, I'll, I'll just mention as well with additions, uh, 
the way I separate it in my software I use, uh, I put tires into additions. Uh, it's just so I can find the cost of them e easier later on down the track because my additions list of things is, is a hell of a lot shorter than uh, like your maintenance and repair. So, so yeah, uh, these are actually really, really close. So $10,999 in the disco or five cents a kilometer. $10,105 in the Land Cruiser or five cents a kilometer again. So those two, pretty well on par. Where it comes, where that really separates though, however, is the totals. So, so Disco, $84,272 uh, or 35 cents a kilometer. Uh, versus the Land Cruiser, $68,863. Uh, 33 cents a kilometre. So, you know, this is only two cents a kilometre more uh, to run, but that's added up to $15,409 more for the Disco uh, over those eight years of ownership. As I mentioned, the Auto Trans was the single biggest repair cost I've had. Now, I've also had an issue with the instrument cluster, with a, I actually won't get into the issue, but uh, it was a reasonably costly repair, uh, $763 to be precise. Uh, it's actually probably a bit more if I had the second time it's failed, but that's another story again. Uh, but let's just take out the first time the instrument cluster failed and the auto trans, because they're, they're probably kind of uncommon failures. Uh, and Well, maybe the auto trans isn't a Disco 3, but anyway, that's another story. But it's, if we took those out of contention, then it brings that total for the disco down to $76,046, which is, turns out to be $0.32 cents a kilometre overall, if you worked it out on that, which is actually slightly cheaper than the 80 series, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, but at the end of the day, I have had those failures. Those things have gone wrong. So... I can't just wipe those things out of the memory bank and say it didn't happen because it did. So it is what it is. We're back to the original figure. But if you wanted to break it down as a yearly thing, uh, on average, $10,534 in the disco to run and, uh, and keep it on the, on the road per year uh, versus $8,607 in, uh, in the Land Cruiser 80 series. So we're talking... Uh, $1,926 more per year uh, to run the Disco over, 80, over an 80 series Land Cruiser. That's been my experience and how much it costs to run both a Land Cruiser 80 series and a Discovery 3. Uh, so if you're thinking about buying either of those vehicles, hey, that's uh, especially high mileage ones. This is the sort of figures you could be in for. Uh, yeah, they're not probably that dissimilar, but yeah, it's certainly not cheap to keep any vehicle on the road, yet alone older four wheel drives. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm a DIY mechanic, so pretty much all those repairs and maintenance costs uh, don't include any external labor. There's a, a couple of jobs with the disco that I had to get labor to do, so it, it doesn't skew the figures too much, but if you, were, if you didn't have any ability to do this work yourself, then you are definitely gonna be paying more to cover labor for just your routine servicing and any repairs you get. So just factor that in mind. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, drop me a comment as well. I'd love to hear your ownership based stories for not just these two vehicles, but others as well. Yeah, and I've, I've really enjoyed uh, doing the comparison and digging through some of my old notes as well. If you enjoyed this video, then uh, maybe consider checking out some of my other videos from uh, previous. Uh, some of them are pretty crappy, I must admit. Uh, but this YouTube channel is still quite small. Uh, currently at the moment, we're just shy of 500 uh, subscribers. So I'd really appreciate a subscription. Uh, I'm hoping to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So yeah, do us a solid and uh, see if you can help us out. Thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time, hopefully. Cheers, guys.